information, but sometimes people need time to process, right? So I am going to upload the co the presentation which I have today with me, and so that I am going to post all the uh, presentations in the announcement folder, correct? And then based on that, we, we can do the commit next week. Make sense? Okay. So tonight, your job is open each and every presentation, go through it thoroughly. And then when the day comes for code, 100 out of 100. Just stop it. around us are always interacting with one another and create all of these complex behaviors all around us. And for example, there are 8 billion humans on this planet and the interaction between each of us create society and civilization throughout the history and it's enabled us to build all of this impossible infrastructure and larger stuff. We have like 195 countries right now, we have like 6,500 languages and it's like a hundred pronouns for some reason. Um, all of this big achievement would not be possible if there are no interaction between things. So, even in the smaller scale, interaction can vary from any biological level. From the very nearest of our brains that controls our thoughts, emotions, and um, actions, and various um, animals, uh, pred predation, herbivory, uh, symbiosis, mutualism, commensalism, and all those stuff. Yeah, so even in a smaller scale, in our brain, for example, and let me zoom in to our brain, there's like billions of neuron cells talking with one another, give us consciousness, it's enable us to make like decisions, and it make us happy. <laughs> when we see a picture of a meme, and it make us sad when the next slide is on the meme, a bunch of text. And even in something very abstract, like math, for example, a subject that almost everybody is learning every day, uh, we might not think there are interactions, but in fact there are like plenty of them in there, in between equation, between formula, between graph, everything we're learning. So when we get to understand all of this uh, connection, it's enabled us to really learn the subject <laughs> more it's in a better way and it is more beautiful Great. but today's presentation we want to emphasize the interaction in the field of biology which is the interaction in the population so the study of interaction in population is what we call ecology and these are the type of interaction um, between organism and species and living things but we're only going to talk in detail for uh, about a few of them because other are just like a subset of the larger one. So, so competition. 
competitions with indi individuals or different species compete for the same resources, like food, water, or living spaces. It happens when there isn't enough space for uh, resources to satisfy both parties. And in competition, individuals or species try to outcompete each other to get the resource they need to survive and reproduce. This can affect their growth, survival, and ability to produce offspring. Competition is an important process in nature that influences the populations of organisms and helps shape ecosystems. There are two types of competitions, interference competition and explo exploitative competitions. Let's first talk about interference competition. Interference competition occurs when individuals directly interact with and hinder the access of others to resources. In this type of competitions, individuals actively interfere with the foraging, <coughs> mating, or establishment uh, efforts of their comp competitors. They may use aggressive behavior such as fighting, territorial or resource defense to exclude or intimidate others. Some interference competition uh, includes male elephants fighting in physical, physical combat to establish dominance and gain access to resources, and birds de defending their nesting sites from other individuals of the same species, or plants releasing um, chemicals that inhibit the growth of other smaller plants, or, or third wheeling your best friend's date, interfering, inter interfering their relationship. Yes. <laughs> and now I'm going to explain exploitative competition. Exploitative competition occurs when individuals or species that are indirectly compete for limited resources. By, by exploiting and depleting them. In this comp type of competition, individuals reduce resource availability for others by consuming or utilizing resources more e efficiently or rapidly. Examples of exploitative competition include lions and hyenas competing for the same prey and plants competing for sunlight in a densely uh, packed forest with taller trees and smaller plants. This can be seen as a negative, negative, negative interaction for both parties, since both are harmed. And uh, yeah. So the second most interesting type of interaction between individuals is something called cooperation. I don't know what that word means. Basically, both parties that involved in the interaction can be uh, take the advantage of the interaction itself. So, just a quick question. When a bee finds a food source, how would it tell the other bee where the source is? We all know that bees don't talk. They also don't call their friend either because they don't talk. But they do dance for some reason. And all of this, com the simple dance uh, behavior, give exact information to their fellow bee exactly where the, the flower fields are. So basically, it tells how far it is and which angle from the sun the field is. So basically, B can understand vector math more than we do. This type of interaction is what we call internal cooperation. I just made that word up. Um, it's not really a division in the cooperation itself, but basically, it's the interaction between the same organism. And as the example before, is B using physical communication to tell the other bee where the flower field is. So basically it's dance and the other one wiping with the dance and they you know, they talk with each other. And another example is ants, colony. So they use chemical signal and physical uh, signal to tell the other ants what should they expect in front of them. Like, are there like any food? Or should they be alert? There are enemy or something or should they attack? And there are also another example another type of cooperation which is external cooperation and basically it is the interaction between different types of organisms. The same example before is ant colony and another type of insects what we call the scale insects. Basically this type of insects release a sugary substance we call honeydew and ants really like it, it's like a food for them so the ants colony when they found it they take all of those substance and in return they protect the uh, scale insects Basically, it's like in the movie where they, like gang, uh, they take money from a business and in return they protect it. I'm not sure it's the right uh, metaphor for it, but it's something. 
Another example is to clean the bush. This is not really a protection thing. It just the smaller fish get into the larger fish mouth and it's clean, it's eat the food from the larger fish. And the larger one is just chill about it, they don't care, so they give the food for the smaller one and they don't attack each other. And this type of uh, interaction is positive and positive because most parties that involved can get the advantage of the interaction. But now we'll discuss predation. Predation and herbivore are fundamental ecological interactions that shape the dynamics of ecosystems. Predation involves the hunting, capturing, and consuming of one organism by another for food. Predation have evolved various adaptations such as sharp claws, keen senses, and agility, and to effectively catch and subdue their prey. Example of predation includes lions hunting gazelles, Sharks spring on fishes and hawks um, are preying for mice. Since all these prey, no, and prey species, on the other hand, have developed an array of defensive mechanisms to evade predation, including camouflage, uh, as seen as a, a the stick, a walking stick insect, spines as, as seen on a puffer fish and a, and a porcupine, and. Uh, Toxins are seen on poisonous dart frogs. Since all these prey, since all these prey have these significant skills to evade the predator, does that mean that the predators are only good for their agility and keen senses? Well, no. Well, no. Since many particular predators have special skills to make their hunting effective and quick. Take oct octopus for examples. This species has the remarkable ability to change both the color and texture of its skin to blend in with the surroundings, making it a master of disguise. The octopus possesses, possesses specialized skin cells called chromatophores, <laughs> chromatophores, which contain pigments that can expand or contract to produce various colors. By manipulating the size and distribution of these chromatophores, the octopus can rapidly change its skin color and patterns to match the factor, effectively camouflaging itself from potential prey and predators. Herbivore, on the other hand, involves the consumption of plant materials by herbivores. Herbivores have specialized adaptations to extract nutrients from plants, such as specialized teeth, digestive tract, a digestive enzyme, and long digestive tracts. Grazing animals such as zebras, feeding on grasses, giraffes, browsing on tree leaves are examples of herbivores. Herbivores affect plants' population by influencing their growth, reproduction, and survival. In response, plants have evolved various defense mechanisms, such as thorns, like those found on cacti or bitter taste like in wild cucumbers, these defense discourages herbivores from consuming them and protect the plant's resources. Both predation and herbivory are crucial for maintaining ecological balance. So the last type of interaction we're going to talk about in this presentation is something called the symbiosis. It's not really a, a single interaction itself. It's combined with many other types of interactions. First of all, we have a parasitism, which is, as the name suggests, some of us already know, is the relationship which one organism takes the benefit from the expense of other. Like a mosquito, for example, it's suck your blood, while you don't get any benefit from it. And this type of uh, interaction can be seen as positive and negative, as one type of organism gets the benefit while the other doesn't get anything, or maybe to even get the disadvantage of the interaction so. And another type of interaction in symbiosis is the common salism. Uh, this type of interaction is that one organism take the advantage of the other while the other one, while the other type of organism might have the advantage, neutral or maybe not. So we put the question mark in there. And the last one is mutualism. This is similar to uh, cooperation, as because two types of uh, organism actually help each other and benefit one another with their actions. It's also possible in the part. So in conclusion to this presentation, we should learn about the interaction between everything around us, as it shows us more about all of those um, hidden activity that we don't know. For example, the ant colony, 
they might not know that uh, there are actions going around, but the entire ants on this planet added together, their weight is equivalent to the entire population of humans itself. And simple interaction between all of those organisms create complex colony and it could rule the world sometime. But uh, uh, something I want to point out is that our human interaction is very varied. It's, for example, it's for the ants and bee, they only have, have like one type of interaction between uh, two organisms. But for human, we have uh, cooperation sometimes, sometimes we compete with one another. So it really shows that human is a, com a complex organism and species on this planet. Thank you for your attention. Uh, 